It's Chris Franco from CMQ Investing. If you like this video, let me know by subscribing. Do I say smash that like button? <laughs> Is that too much? No, just gently touch the like button for me. So enough of me, let's get to Charlie. One of my favorite remarks in the history of human remarks was by Sir Cedric Hardwick, who is a great British actor. And he said, I have been a great actor for so long that I no longer know what I truly think on any subject. And I think that happens to a lot of people. And it happens to virtually every politician. <laughs> of course, I hate the Bitcoin success. I don't welcome a currency that's so useful and kidnappers and extortionists and so forth, nor do I like just shuffling out a few extra billions and billions and billions of dollars to somebody who just invented a new financial product out of thin air. I think I should say modestly that I think the whole damn development is disgusting and contrary to the interests of civilization, and I'll let, leave the criticism to others. And by the Charlie way, the Roman Empire worked, the, worked as long as it did because it was so decentralized. I, I think it's just god-awful that something like that would draw investment from civilized men and decent citizens. It's, it's deeply wrong. We don't want to make our money selling things that are bad for people. But we got the states doing it. With the lottery, you know. Well, no, but that's bad too. Yeah, I understand. That's but very I mean, bad. Once that's you very the bad. Personal, that's yeah. one of the things that's wrong with it. It's getting respectable to be, to do these things. The states are just as bad as Robin Hood. Well, in a sense, they're worse. I mean, they're they're really taxing. I know it's. it's based yeah, I know. Their, I know. Yeah, they're taxing hope. The, they the, do the, that. The states in America <laughs> replaced the mafia as the proprietor of the numbers game. That's what happened. They pushed the mafia aside and said, that's our business, not yours. Doesn't make me proud of my government. I think it's probably a mistake to be basically anti-capitalist. I think capitalism is what raises GDP for everybody. And so, and I have a, also a feeling that Benjamin Franklin was right when he said that it's hard for an empty sack to stand upright. And to some extent, the prosperity of leading American institutions helps them behave better. Now, there are exceptions in promotional finance and so on, but by and large, Franklin was right. And so I, I, I'm a little wary of just constantly being mad at people because they have a little more money. I frequently said I wouldn't move across the street to save my children $500 million in taxes. And so, <coughs> so I have, that's, that's my personal view on the subject. But I do think it is stupid for states to drive out their wealthiest citizens. The old people, they don't commit any crimes. They donate to the local charity. Who in the hell in their right mind would drive out the rich people? I mean, Florida and places like that are very shrewd, and places like California are being very stupid. It's contrary to the interests of the state. Well, I don't think it would be the end of the world. We've adapted to the tax rate, whatever it is. I personally prefer holding Berkshire to holding the market. Because I'm quite comfortable holding Berkshire. I, I think our businesses are better than the average in the market. Is it because you don't think the market values it fairly? Well, these are just accidents of history, and things are fluctuating at all times. But in, on a composite basis, I'd, I'd bet on Berkshire over the market. That's assuming we're all dead. You know, you, you can imagine two things. A young man marries into your family. He's an English professor at, say, Swarthmore, or he's a, he works for Chevron. Which would you pick? Sight unseen. I want to admit I'd take the guy from Chevron. <laughs> well, I hope your daughters agree with you. <laughs> yes, and the professional economists, of course, have been very surprised by what's happened. It reminds me of what Churchill said about Clement Attlee. He said he was a very modest man and had a great deal to be modest about. And that's exactly what's happened to the professional economists. You know, they were so confident about everything. And it turns out the world is more complicated than, than they thought. I think the modern monetary theorists are more confident than they ought to be, too. I don't think we, any of us know what's going to happen to this stuff. I do think there's a good chance that, that this extreme conduct is more feasible than everybody thought. <laughs> but I do know if you keep just doing it without any limit, it will end in disaster. 
I call it fee-driven buying. In other words, they're not buying because it's a good investment. They're buying it because the advisor gets a fee. And, of course, the more of that you get, the, the sillier your civilization is getting. And uh, to some extent, it's a moral failing, too, because the easy money made by things like SPACs and total deriv return derivatives and so on and so on, you push that to excess, it causes horrible problems for the civil civilization. And it reflects no credit on the people that are doing it and no credit on the regulators and voters that allow it. So I, I think we have a lot to be ashamed of in current conditions. But it's where the money is. Yeah, but we still... <laughs> but it's, it's shameful what's going on. Yeah. It's not just stupid, it's shameful. And they know somebody else has made money who they don't think is any smarter than they are. No, and, no, I, I don't mind the poor fish that gamble. I don't like the professionals that take the suckers. We're we, used to shooting fish in a barrel, but that's gotten harder. Yeah. Well, of course it's a lot harder. I think one consequence of this present situation is that Bernie Sanders has basically won. And that's because the, with the everything boomed up so high and interest rates so low, what's going to happen is the millennial generation is going to have a hell of a time getting rich compared to our generation. And so the difference between the rich and the poor... And the generation that's rising is going to be a lot less. So Bernie has won. He did it by accident, but he won. Well, I, I, if you're repurchasing stock just a bullet higher, it's deeply immoral. But if you're repurchasing stock because it's a fair thing to do in the interest of your existing shareholders, it's a highly moral act. And the people who are criticizing it are bonkers. Charlie, did you want to add anything to that? No, thank you. The Chinese government will allow businesses to flourish. It was a, one of the most remarkable things that ever happened in the history of the world when a bunch of committed communists just looked at the prosperity of places like Singapore and said, the hell with this, we're not going to stay here in poverty. We're going to copy what works. And they changed communism. They just accepted Adam Smith and added it to their communism. And they said, now we have communism with Chinese characteristics, which is China with a free market with a bunch of billionaires and so forth. And they made that shift. They deserve a lot of credit. Warren and I are not quite as good at that as changing our minds in many cases. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and, and that was a remarkable change coming from such a place. And, of course, it's worked like gangbusters. It had this enormous growth in the average income of the average Chinese. They've lifted 800 million people out of poverty fast. And it, it, there was never anything like it in the history of the world. So my hat is off to the Chinese. And I think they will continue to allow people to make money. They've learned it works. The Chinese, I love what the guy said in the first place. I don't care whether the cat is black and white as long as it catches mice. That's my kind of talk. What's really interesting is the way you prattle out all the time. You're pounding back in even if it's wrong. Yeah, and of course the young people get these ideas after their liberal education. So I think that God has given them direct insights and they're just as crazy as the politicians. Now, there's some old people that have yeah, too. Yeah, well, <laughs> the old people are already crazy, but... They're going to die sooner, so... We have, our old, we have our oldest insanities. The new insanities are the young, the young get. Oh, Warren, even though you shot it and missed, you were at least shooting at an elephant. The cost of health care in Singapore is 20% of what it is in the United States, and their medical system works better. So you were shooting at a huge elephant. But as you found out, it's very hard to people to get very enthusiastic about losing part of their income. Oh, yeah. No, I, I said we, you know, we were fighting a tapeworm. Yeah. Uh, and the were, economy were. and the tapeworm won. <laughs> yeah, the tapeworm, the tapeworm, the, yeah. that's a good, wonderful phrase, the tapeworm. I'll have to copy that. Well, it wasn't a phrase we were looking for. <laughs> Charlie, yeah. Yeah, I, I don't think uh, we're getting too big to manage because we're different from practically every other big corporation in the United States in that we are so excessively decentralized. We have decentralized so much and we have so much authority in the subsidiaries that we can keep doing it for a long, long time as long as it keeps working. And I would say so far that our decentralization has caused more benefits than defects. 
but nobody seems to copy us. Well, but that's but, absolutely true. But I would say this, decentralization won't work unless you have the right kind of culture accompanying it. Yeah, but we do. Yeah, we do. But, and but Greg it's is, dependent on it. And I Greg, mean, will, Greg, Greg will keep the culture. But assuming we keep the culture, it will it can yeah. go on qu quite a ways. For a long, long time. Long, long time. In fact, it may amaze everybody. <laughs> well, that's rather interesting. The, the, the leading quant fund did fabulously on the short-term trading. They, they found little algorithms that worked to make them add predictive value. And as long as they kept working, they just kept doing it as long as the money kept coming in. When they got to using the same system, just to finding some little algorithm and trying to do it mechanically for long-term stock predictions, the record was not nearly as good. And in the short-term stuff, they found that if they tried to do it too much, they destroyed their own advantage. So there was a limit on the amount they could make. But they were very, very smart. Yes, they got very rich. They're very, they very smart. And very smart and very rich, yeah. And, 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 and very and, high grade, by the way. Yeah. Uh, Jim uh, Simons. No, but there's too much. What? There's way too much. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah the, it's still too much in yeah. the same amount. Yeah. I, 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 That's a good answer, Warner. It reminds me of my old Harvard law professor who used to say, let me know what your problem is and I'll try and make it more difficult for you. <laughs> well, I don't know. I, no. If you're not a little confused by what's going on, you don't understand it. <laughs> it's just, no. it is, we're in sort of uncharted territory. Yeah.